So we're here in Venice Beach with Wuda. Hi Wuda. Hello. How you doing? Welcome. Oh. Pleased to meet you. Yes. I will say tea master. And he lives in Taiwan. He's been there for 10 years, is that right? Yes. And about 20 years in total in Asia. Yes, of course. Yeah. And you've dedicated your life to tea? Yes. So, all right, we're going to do some tea. What have we got? Uh, we got some pu'er. Uh, shou pu'er, there's two kinds of pu'er, sheng and shou. Okay. Sheng is raw, and it's produced more, a little bit like a green tea, and then it's um, fermented over time. Where were you born? I was born in Ohio. Ohio, okay. Yeah, a little bit, slightly rural Ohio. I'm from Ohio. What time? What time? What time did you leave Ohio? When did you leave Ohio? Uh, uh, immediately after college. Okay. And uh, I went to India. I had been practicing meditation all through college, and at that time, the higher level courses weren't available in America. They are now, mm. but in, in the tradition that I was in, the meditation tradition, so they're only uh, available in India. So I went and lived in India for a while. Okay, to study meditation further. Yes. Okay. And did you ever live in the States again after that? No. How old were you then? That's like... I was, uh, you know, 21. Yeah. Okay. 22. Around there. And so, to India to study, and then from there, you, you stayed there? I stayed there a few years, and then uh, traveled around the rest of Asia, and uh, then I was in Japan for a long time, mm. and, uh, and uh, almost a year in China. Okay. Then Taiwan. Or the China, then Japan, then Taiwan. I had the order. Okay. Has it, has it all been focused on tea, or did you find tea along the way through your meditation? I was drinking tea before I left. Yeah. But actually, like, focusing on tea has been about uh, 10 or 12 years. Well, the living tea is the word we use in this tradition to, to mean tea that is grown in the oldest of ways, where the tea trees that are allowed to grow up and are seed propagated, and are parts of a living, thriving ecology. And it's that as opposed to plantation tea, mm -hmm. which is just monoculture. Okay, so and that's it's not an, an, an ecology and it's not seed propagated. But even that we like to divide into two. Sustainable organic plantation tea yeah. and inorganic unsustainable plantation tea. So what would be an example of the inorganic unsustainable well, that, that's probably by volume for okay. most tea in the world. Yeah, like just the bags that you see in the supermarket. Yes, a lot of that, yes. Ooh. And uh, interestingly enough, I have a friend who did the math. Even really expensive living teas mm. are actually cheaper than really low-quality bag teas. Okay. Because the bag tea is produced in a way called CTC, which is cut, tear, curl. The tea leaves are just basically shredded as they're processed. And the reason is that it's supposed to release its essence completely in one or two steepings. So you can only really steep a tea bag once or twice. What does a box of tea bags cost, you know? Five, six dollars. So six dollars you get a box of tea bags. Yeah. Each one can only be steeped twice. So you get two mugs per bag. Yeah. So you add that up, it's like two liters. Okay? Mm. Then even if you spend like a thousand dollars on a hundred grams of really awesome tea, mm. two grams of that tea in a pot can be steeped 50 times, 30 times, 20 times, each one, many mugs. And so when you break it down, the tea bag is like you know, very 20, 30 cents a cup. Yeah. And the thousand dollar tea is like two cents a cup. Yeah. Or less. Sometimes they're point zero two cents a cup. So we can just, you just keep steeping these, these leaves. Yeah, yeah, you can steep on and on and on so many times. Yeah. When it's living tea, there's so much more essence in them, so much more because they're deep they're trees. Juju. Juju. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of juju in there. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, Magic, juju, whatever, voodoo, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And uh, there's also a lot of more minerals, deeper roots, more substance yeah. in the leaves. that They, they have more to give because they're not weak little clone bushes that are surviving on chemical fertilizers. Mm -hmm. They're plants with deep roots that are surviving on mountain minerals and water. Yeah. So, of course, they've got a lot to live. And a lot to give, a lot to live for, a lot to uh, send out into their leaves. About taking in the like, photosynthesis, the energy of the sun, the energy of the stars, and like 600 year old trees. Oh, even older. The oldest yeah. one we've found so far is 3,500 years old. Yeah. It's like six, seven people around. That's you can go online and look at pictures of it. 
Yeah? Yeah. What do what we Google? This old tree? Yeah, 3,000 year old tree, 3,500 year old tree, Yunnan. Yeah. 3,500 3, year old tea tree, Yunnan. Okay, have a look. Yeah. And see, some people watching this, and I would have, say, six or seven years ago, if I heard myself saying some of the things I say now five, six years ago, I'd pointed at me and gone, oh, you're a bit of a hippie. Well, I think let go of all those categories because they just prevent you from connecting to people and to yourself and to others, and people aren't categories. That's a form of violence, actually, okay. when you take a three-slash-four-dimensional, mm. because time and space are one, but when you take a living, breathing human being mm. and you flatten them into a category, mm. whatever it is, mm. you're a hippie, you're a, or a racial, yeah. you're, you're Asian, you're, I mean, flattening people into categories makes them into dolls. Yeah. In the cookie cutter drawings on a piece of paper, cartoons. Isn't that what society's done though? Yeah, we do that a lot, but that's not, you know. I have a friend, he, he's some awesome, really awesome story. Mm. He was walking in the park, and uh, some guy came up to him and said, Are you a hippie? Mm. And he said, What do you mean? And the guy said, Well, I mean, are you, do you like worship trees and stuff? And my friend had the most brilliant answer. Go on. He looked at the guy and said, I worship all of reality and walked away. And you can only imagine how reeling that guy was. Yeah. Worship all of reality. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it's, you know, people, people have ideas about, about this or that, but, um, you know, we are, we are, spiritual human we are spiritual beings mm. and that's a really important shift in perspective mm. that I'm I'm not a I'm not a human being having a spiritual experience I'm a spiritual being having a, a human experience okay yeah that's that's a that's a really important shift yeah that I'm not just this body I think everyone has a sense of that yeah, not just this body. Look how much your body has changed since you've been alive. Mm. And like you were saying, even when you were five, that something was there. Mm. It's still there. Mm. It was there before. But your body has changed so much. Yeah. So, and look, I mean, I right now my fingernails are part of me. Clip, clip, clip. Mm. Gone. Not a part of me. Mm. You know, I lose my arm. I'm still me. And now that arm is just a lump of flesh. This is another powerful thing about tea is that what was outside becomes inside. That boundary vanishes because it's not real. Mm. Right now, you know, I, I'm talking and the sound waves are coming and they go in your ear. And both of us are right now inside of Bruce the dog over there because he could smell us. Yeah. So we're inside of him too. And we're breathing. So we're taking in air and we're taking in food and liquid. Our environment is, you know, our, our skin is billions of pores. Yeah. We're all full of holes all over. Holes for sights to get in, for sounds, for smells. For I mean, that boundary of like, this is me and that is not, it's not real. Mm. The, the water is just as essential for your survival as any of your organs. You can't, you can't live without your organs. You also can't live without water. Mm. That's like if somebody came up to you and said, which would you rather have, your organs or water? It's an absurd question. Yeah. I can't answer that. I need both. Either one you take away, I die. You know, if some torturer said that to me, I'm either going to take one of your organs or I'm going to take water away from you. And just, uh, do your worst. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You, what you've just told me is that you're going to kill me. Yeah. So what, what can I do about that? I either got to try and get away or you're going to kill me. There's not any, I mean, neither of those are, it'd be the same as, as that same arch villain saying, would you rather I take your liver or your heart? Yeah. Same thing. It doesn't make a difference. Mm. If you take out my liver, I die. If you take out my heart, I die. If you take water away from me, I die. Air. Where'd that air come from? Yeah. From trees. Yeah. Without trees, you also die. Yeah. That's true. They're taking the trees. Without plants, without sun, without all kinds of things. All right. You're all bound up in it. Look, when, a, when they do a National Geographic on the river, mm. 
It's like, you know, we're going to do a one-hour program coming up tonight, River Ecology. The one-hour film is not just a film of the water and the river falling by. No. Boring. It's the water and the river falling by, but it's also all the beings that live in the water. Look, here's a crayfish. And here, you know, here comes the otter. And, right? So yeah. the otter is the river ecology, too. Yeah, it's all... It's the all crayfish all. is the river. <clears throat> is the river. You see? Mm. So we go with our environment. Any change in the organism is a change in the environment. Any mm. change in the environment is a change in the organism. They're, they're all wrapped up. If aliens were watching, everything you do is a change in the environment that they are watching. Are they watching? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. That's not... I, I, I have yet to know. I've... I've never had any personal contact with aliens. It seems to be, it seems to be, uh, there's a lot pointing in that direction. There's yeah. a lot of, a lot of uh, evidence pointing in that direction, but it's not my experiential wisdom. Okay. So I don't, I don't, I don't have any idea. Personally, I'm open to any possibility. And that's, I mean, that's also true, true science. Mm. Our science now in the world often isn't science because it all has an agenda. Yeah. It's science that starts with a conclusion. Like you look a at shame. The, if you look at the history of science, mm. actually it's the history of a bunch of people who are wrong. Because like I've got a theory, oh, that's right, that makes a lot of sense. And then another dude comes along and is like, actually you're wrong. And it's like this. And everybody's like, yeah, it's like this. And then we get to Einstein. And he's like, it's like this. And everybody's like, yeah, you're so smart. And then a few years later, it's like, no, he's wrong. It's like this. And it's just a long history of wrong. Yeah. But it's also a long history of the true scientist is, is, Einstein said this, the true scientist is always in a state of awe at the miracles of nature and at the brilliance and intelligence of it. Mm. A, a human being in its mother's stomach organizes millions of cells of, of, of body per day in a more advanced and intelligent way than all of the supercomputers on this earth built, put together could do. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So it's it, 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 it itself is intelligent. Incredibly intelligent. You were in your mother's belly and like cells were just organizing. Sometimes it can go sometimes it can go wrong, but it's it's way more intelligent than any computer or anything we could possibly even imagine. And that's that intelligence. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Don't find intelligent beings in an unintelligent environment. And if you want to accept that human beings are intelligent, if you don't want to accept that, then, then fine. Well, we're all hairless monkeys. <laughs> but I accept that. If you want to accept that human beings are intelligent, then this universe is intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. I accept that. I think we're intelligent. You think? Then the universe is intelligent. Yeah. This is, and I think I believe the same way with spirituality. Mm. Paul Simon has a song that is, says the lyrics in the song. It's called "The Obvious Child." And the lyrics are: Some people say that the sky is just the sky. Some people say a lie is just a lie. But why deny the obvious child? The cross is in the ballpark. Why deny the obvious child? And what he's saying by the cross is in the ballpark is that the great spiritual masters have come. This world has been Buddhified. There has been a Buddha. Yeah. And and so the cross is in the ballpark. Why deny the obvious? Yeah. Why deny the sacred when it has manifested itself in such obvious forms and continues to do so? And the sky is not just the sky. And a lie is not just a lie. It's more. So, and all this wisdom is wisdom for me that, you know, I learned from tea. No, I mean, I have read and I've lived and I've meditated and I've, I mean, those are aspects of who I am, but I also learned a lot from this plant. Yeah. And uh, it's a powerful plant. And so, uh, you know, it can do a lot. It's really powerful in this time of day and age too, because if you put a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Christian and a, and a Muslim in a room and they talk about politics or religion, they're going to fight and argue mm. if they go in that same room and only talk about tea and drink tea they're going to come out brothers and I've literally seen that happen yeah that very thing 
Yeah, because I, my master comes from Malaysia, and I, I've stayed in Malaysia and studied there a lot, and it's a very eclectic society. Yeah, of, of Islam's Christians, Hindus, all Chinese people all living together, and the tea lovers there hang out. They got no problems. Yeah, and if, and if their conversation were to turn to politics or religion or something, it would not go well. But they stick to tea. Yeah, and they have no problem hugging each other and being great friends. And when I go around and teach, I go all around the world. I go all over the world to teach tea. A big part of my family is in Florida, mm. and they're Christians. Mm. And every time I come, they're like, you know, tea ceremony, tea ceremony, tea ceremony. Yeah. And we have tea ceremony. And if I give any teaching, they all start going, oh, that's like when Jesus said, or that's like when we're at, we're down and we're, da, da, da. It, 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 it works perfectly works. for them because it's nonverbal. Yeah. So, of course, it's Christian. It, it doesn't matter. They can say it. They can take it and adapt it to whatever, to whatever they need. It, it, it is, we call this plant adaptogenic. Mm. It means that it's not medicine in the sense that it heals a particular thing. It kind of in your body also just does good stuff. Kind of whatever you need. And whatever you need it to be in the space too, it can adapt to. Yeah. So if you need so good, calm, social connection with human beings. He's happy to take the background as he has today. Yeah. And just be a kind of social lubricant. That was one of the like things they used to sell tea in Britain. Yeah. Social lubricant. Oh, really? Well, that kind of tea. Loose was all up a loosen bit. people up, <laughs> relax. And tea is also like a time. Yeah. To just get together and loosen up and be with people you you care about or yeah. that are friends or, you know, can meet and set your job down and all that and yeah, get together, be. take a break, you know, and hang out. So yeah, I mean, at the best dancers, you know, they, there's not even any music, there's not any self, there's just dancing. Yeah. The best athletes, they're playing from a space also of complete clarity, and they don't know how they did what they did. And so you ask them, the reporter asks them, and they either give some silly answer or they point to God. If they're, if the mind of an athlete is anyway involved in, in what they're doing, then they're not having a good day. Yeah. And bookies have made a living of that, of knowing some like gossip and so and so broke up with his boyfriend. And, so-and-so broke up with his girlfriend or is having trouble with this or that. And when people are having uh, those kind of troubles, they won't play well. So they have their bets with that. That's okay. There, and, you know, this is how in, in ancient China, as I mentioned, there's these great sages that were really simple, simple people. Do you know the word in English, mister, comes from the German meister, which means master. Okay. Because back in the day, everybody was a master of something. Yeah. Carpenter, cobbler, farmer, whatever. But see, nowadays, people aren't masters, they're tourists. Yeah. Tour, I'm a tourist of photography. I'm a tourist of, you know. Alan Watts used to joke that rich people, they don't want to take the, like, 10 years, 10 solid years of hard work that it takes to learn how to properly sail a yacht to the point that you can take it out and really really jam, mm. really sail and feel that beautiful feeling. So they buy them and park them in bays and throw cocktail parties on them. Yeah. Another example is like buying a really expensive camera and then setting it on auto. Not taking the time to mm. master that thing to the point where you could really enjoy it. And, and that, you know, it's like, it's like trying to speed up. Let's say tea is just a hobby for you. And then, like, people take their hobby, whatever it is, and they buy gizmos and stuff to make it go quicker. Yeah. And my feeling is, if that's your hobby and that's what you enjoy doing in your free time, why on earth would you want to make that more convenient and, and speed it up? Yeah. Be with it. Because then yeah. it's just like work. Yeah. If that's your feeling, it's like, I got to do it quickly and I'm doing it for another reason and then I'm going to get out of here. It's no longer something you enjoy. So, do you think people are doing that? In life, in general. Oh, definitely. Mm. Rushing around from distraction to distraction. Mm. How missing out on the important things, you know? You're busy, busy, you know, Googling and apping and iPhoning. Yeah. And the person you love the most in the whole world is sitting right next to you. Yeah. And tomorrow she or he won't be there. Gone. And that was a mischance. Could have looked them in the eyes. Mm.